Um, all right, very, very welcome uh, to this webinar about faith for ecocide law. My name is Martin Hedberg, and I'm doing this together with Pella Thiel and uh, Henrik Grape. And uh, Pella Thiel, she's an ecologist and president of End Ecocide Sweden. And Henrik Grape, he's a theological and a priest. And he's also a member, he's working with the international uh, climate and, and environmental issues. And he's part of the Sveriges Kristna Råds Klimatarbetsgrupp. And I couldn't translate that properly. So I, I will have to ask you, Henrik, to the say what Christian, that is. The Christian Council in Sweden and the Working Group on Climate Change. So it's not Thank so you. easy. And of course, you know that while we're here, we have some major problems, to say the least with our relation, human relation, with the, re the rest of life on this planet. You all know about uh, IPCC, for instance, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, and you know about IPBES, maybe, or hopefully. I have to read from a paper about IPBES. It's, it's about ecosystems. It's similar to the climate uh, panel, but regarding ecosystems itself. And IPBES, it says for... Uh, Intergovernmental Science Policy Platform on Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services. And uh, they just recently published a report. That's not why we're here, but just to give you a brief background on, on the problems that we're facing, where they say in the beginning of it, unprecedented changes in climate and biodiversity driven by human activities have combined and increasingly threatened nature, human lives, livelihoods and well-being around the world. Biodiversity loss and climate change are both driven by human economic activities and mutual reinforce each other. Neither will be successfully resolved unless both are tackled together. And this is something very fundamental that we, we tend to look upon sort of the major problem, climate change as, and then people respond of, on, on increasing global average temperature and carbon dioxide but that is not it's not sort of the only problem and climate and ecosystem they are interconnected so when you have climate change you get problems in the ecosystems you get degradation of ecosystems and as you get degraded degrad, degraded ecosystems you also get climate change increasingly so there there are feedback loops within the systems and it is beyond increasing average temperatures and beyond flash floods and, and, and hurricanes and things like that. We're actually very close to tipping points where we can see, for instance, the Gulf, collapse of the Gulf Streams or the Indian monsoon or, or collapse of the uh, uh, rainforest in Amazonia or collapse of, of uh, West Antarctic ice sheets. So there's a lot more than just a little climate change or a little warmer during summer times or forest fires or things like that. These problems that we're facing they're actually harming not only nature, but, but the very fabric upon what our human civilization are based on are threatened. And we need to do something about this. And that's why we have, have the, well, this is part of um, a way of dealing with these kind of problems, but because not only need to, we to sort of restore and, and plant more trees and do things like that, it's an absolute no-brainer that the first thing that we should stop doing is actually um, being or, or having these all these destructive activities to nature in itself. And that's why we have this idea about the ecocide law. And I would like to ask you, Pella, to give us a short introduction about what, what is ecocide. Thanks a lot, Martin, and uh, that's a great introduction. Actually, the architect of ecocide law in the shape that we're talking about it here, which is as, as an international crime within the Rome Statute of the International Criminal Court in The Hague, that's Polly Higgins, uh, a, a British barrister who sadly passed away two years ago. And she used to say that uh, like the like the um, oath of of uh, medical doctors, first do no harm. So if we are in a crisis situation where we don't really know 
uh, what to do and, and how to think about development. It's kind of an existential crisis that we are in as a civilization. What we should first do is to not damage the living systems that we are a part of. And that is what uh, ecocide law is doing. And actually, uh, one of the first people to mention this concept of ecocide was Olof Palme, the Swedish prime minister who gathered the world for the first time, actually, for an international conference on, uh, on the environment, the Stockholm conference in 72. And since then, we have together created hundreds, literally hundreds, I think it's almost 2,000 treaties and conventions on the environment uh, on the international level. And, and still, we are in an ecological crisis, as you said. It's really looking dire. And um, so the rules that we have in common are allowing us to damage the most precious uh, living systems of the world. But we can change that, and we should change that. And it's really time to do that by uh, amending the International Criminal Court with a fifth crime, together with the crime of um, the war crimes, crimes of aggression, crimes against humanity, and genocide, which will make, a, make us to shift in how we view ourselves that actually human happiness and well-being is totally dependent on the living world. So these crimes that are of concern to the whole international community, they should be um, amended by recognizing that we are part of nature. And it's really, uh, it's, a, it's a very special day to, to talk about this today, as today, uh, an international independent panel of um, top lawyers and legal scholars has just presented a draft definition of ecocide as an international crime, which looks very, very promising. So um, thank you all for being here. It sounds like a paradigm shift, shift, shift or sim similar than that. Uh, maybe it's a fork in the road that we're sort of heading towards something else. Uh, Henrik, um, can you say something about what is the faith for ecocide law? Thank you. Yeah, uh, first I, I want to say hello to everybody that actually came to this web uh, to this meeting. I'm I'm so happy to see that so many of you that I know for years have been active on 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 uh, faith traditions uh, and together with environmental issues like uh, Bishop Jeff from from South Africa who has been a a really important person in this, and Kusumita Pedersen from Parliament of World Religions, and Fletcher Harper from Green Faith, and Karena Gore from from um, from Earth Ethics, and Martin Kopp. I mean, th th you're so many of you, and you have done such a tremendous work over the years. So I'm so 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 good to see you all here. So what we have tried to do, I'm and I have been a part of the interfaith work on climate for many years, and I, so we have done work together over the year. And I know the importance that all of you have played to put push um, the faith issues to climate change and the climate justice agenda. And what we thought in, in together with, with and Ecoside Sweden and, and the Christian Council uh, of, of Sweden to do how can we do our what, what can we add to this agenda that could be uh, a way taking this to, a, to another level. And we have this discussion to how can faith uh, and on an interfaith uh, basis, how can we contribute to to have a higher understanding of the importance of functioning ecosystem, to, uh, to also know more about how to protect, how to, to take care of, of the environment. Because we are in a very different position than we were 100 years ago. Because humanity haven't had this kind of impact to the whole global system that we have today. Uh, Johan Rockström the, from Stockholm Resilience Center uh, did this planetary boundaries that I know some of you know about. And, he's, uh, and it's, it's clear that we are transgressing the planetary boundaries. How can we 
from the faith communities contribute to a new understanding of what it is to be human on an earth where, where humanity is behind the steering wheel of the future. So I think that sometimes faith-based uh, organization of faith communities are a bit of a sleeping, <laughs> sleeping on these issues. They don't think that they really matter in this kind of technical and scientific uh, questions. But I think from dialogue with science over the years, it's a very important also to have a driving force behind it because we the urgency to act is is uh, is high. So I think that if if we from a faith communities could from our different traditions bring our narratives why it is important to protect the earth, I think that could be pivotal to the choir that wants to see a more caretaking of the earth and more of an intergenerational justice um, to coming generations to take care of it. So from my perspective, I see this as the, the ecocide law is, is from my perspective, an important kind of mark to say, we have to respect humanity, human rights, uh, the e equal value of all people, but also at the same time, understand the importance of ecosystem of all life on earth not to be only anthropocentric in this case or to to have and from my faith traditions i think there are there are many kinds of uh, of understanding that this is something that we should do um i think that 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 uh, the understanding of what it is to be to be a caretaker not so much of a stewards of the planet. How can we be caretakers together? And I think that the ecocide law is there to protect, is there to protect the ecosystem. Uh, and also what I've learned over the years is the important that indigenous people's spirituality, their understanding of ecosystem, their long-term uh, understanding of, this, of, the, of the coming generation and learning from the earlier generations is something that we have to reclaim as, uh, as from, from the whole uh, humanity. As, so I think that indigenous perspective is also a part of this. Taking from my old tradition, I just went back to look at uh, St. Francis and his love that the sea that uh, another Francis picked up on for some years ago. And when he say, praise be you, my Lord, through sister Mother Earth, who sustain us and govern us, who produces buried fruits with colored flowers um, and herbs. I think to, to, to talk about Mother Earth in this from 800 years poem, so to say, is something that we have to pick up again to have a relation to the ecosystem that is more than it is just natural resources. The last thing I, I want to say is, um, um, yeah, I wanted I wanted to 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 have the quote from uh, from uh, Martin Luther King, Doctor King, who who said that. Uh, uh, <laughs> so, sorry, I, I missed it somewhere. I but you know that the quote about uh, the the arc that is uh, bending. Um, uh, uh, to justice, and I think that this is the way of 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 bending the future to a more just and and, and moral uh, future, and we have to do it now. And I think that if faith leaders and people of faith are behind this, I think we also can have a a, a, a significant change to to a future where we'll also understand the importance of living ecosystem and that will create a more peaceful and a more just future so as a start I, I do this so thank you aren't you talking a little bit about how to actually change the consciousness about our relation with nature itself i know you've been thinking a lot about this Pella. the consciousness of how we think about our relation to nature mm. i can give it to Pella. I, yeah, you can give it to Pella. <laughs> yeah, and she can uh, maybe inspire me. I can me. begin. <laughs> yeah, uh, because I think this is actually. I mean, yes, it's it's about bending towards justice, but it's actually also about transforming a culture, and that transformation. It's really interesting that um, 
a lot of international uh, bodies like the IPES, as you said, and the Convention on Biodiversity are now uh, speaking very clearly about the need for transforming our society to, to, to be able to, to survive, basically, and uh, to safeguard biodiversity, i.e. life on Earth. Mm -hmm. um, so, and, and what is that transformation about? And to me, it's about uh, what you have been talking about also, Henrik, that we have a fundamental misunderstanding in this culture that has been at the core of, um, I think, of the legitimizing voices of uh, Western civilization from the ancient Greeks that, you know, humans are separate from nature and it's our duty to, to use nature as, as good as we can, as, as a resource, not as a relative. So not as uh, what it says in Laudato Si. And that has also been a core message from Christianity too. So uh, there are a double messages there. And the tradition I come from, which is the scientific tradition, is still very clear that humans are sort of the ones who count. And we, we are here to use nature. That's um, the, the core message from the philosophers developing the, the scientific tradition that you know, we should use technology to use nature. And that's what we are still doing. And we try to do it maybe a bit more efficient, but it's not, it's still about using. So um, that's the transformation I see is to understand ourselves as part of a living whole. And to me, as an ecologist, that's also like the very, in a very physical sense in the word spirituality. So it comes from 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 uh, uh, respire to breathe like mm -hmm. that's my most immediate way i am part of the living whole so being part of a whole is also being holy right so this is about come becoming whole and uh, respecting uh, nature as part of that whole as well this is targeting can i ask a question we will have some questions uh, at later about on. half later on in about okay. 10, 10 okay. minutes. We will have some oh. open for some okay. questions. Yeah. Um, this is uh, also an interreligious um, um, project or, or uh, the Faith for Ecocide Law. Can you say something about that, Henrik? Yes, um, I, I see this as, as a continuation of, of different kind of interfaith action we have on climate, on divestment, um, on, on eco-friendly uh, methods from, from, from the faith communities over the years. Just to mention some, we have the Interfaith Liaison Committee, Valerian, who is here, is co-chairing with me. That is a network working during the COPs, uh, uh, the UNFCCC meetings for years we have done uh, different kinds of, uh, of interface statement uh, and, and try to bring the faith communities together also in a dialogue with the UNFCCC secretariat. We have the <clears throat> faith for earth that UN environment is, is, is building up now and we are part of that as well in how to, to bring faith uh, as a more or less as a constituency to the UN uh, bodies to to be have faith as a voice in that discussion where we have parliament of world religion kuzumita Peroson, who is here with us uh, uh, is is very active on this and and we we at the last assembly in toronto we 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 had a lot on 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 climate change and, and on environment in in that meeting uh, we have religions for peace um, that also works together with this we have Green Faith, Fletcher Harper here is a director of Green Faith who have over the year built up a very active grassroots movement for, for interfaith work on different uh, in, environmental issues that is very promising. We have Karen Agor who is here for Center for Earth Ethics who have done lots of good work, especially also including the indigenous perspective, uh, I would say that is, is so precious to us. We have also something that is going on in uh, we go Pal Patel, of course, we have here from the Bumi project, the, the Hindu uh, inspired uh, project. I am 
done a good work over the years. We have SAFSE in South Africa. So I can, I, the risk is that I forget something very good <laughs> when I, I say all this, but it's just to have an understanding that there, there, is, there is a movement of different kinds moving in the same direction. And yeah. if, we could, if we could have to, to, to sort of to work on this, we can, we can actually have some impact also when it's come to this, this uh, law on ecocide, if, if we are a part of it. Um, and maybe we should mention what we are, think, what we are aiming to do over the, yeah. the coming years. The year future, here it comes. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, Bella. Bella, you can do it. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so um, the, there are all of these initiatives that there has been over the years, and, and uh, I believe, you know, the, to me, the faith communities are really a powerful voice and have been for a long time in these issues. And what we need now is actually, you know, clear, concrete policy changes that have the power to hold responsible people to account. And that's where we need criminal law because criminal law is how we as a society understand what's important and what's not important, what's right and what's wrong. So it's really, really powerful. And this is criminal law at the highest possible level. So what we want to do is to get the voices from faith communities towards the UN conferences on biodiversity, climate change, and 50 years from the Stockholm conference in 72, we have the Stockholm plus 50 conference in a year's time in June 22. And that's where we believe that the world has to come together for ecocide as an international crime. And the people who have the power to, to um, make this happen are the heads of state, of the state parties of the Rome statute, 173 states. And what we want to do from End Ecocide Sweden and Stop Ecocide International is to create safe space for them to say, this is what the world needs. This is what we all want. And uh, so we just want to gather voices from faith communities to say, ecocide should be a crime. Simple as that. And we are launching this initiative at the conference uh, September 16th. So what you're getting now is kind of a heads up towards that. And we really need your help to make that happen and to spread the word, to uh, have uh, people there from all over the world and from all faith directions. So we are basically um, asking for help here. Yes, and should I share in the chat now the, the manifesto that we... Please do. <laughs> I share in the chat now for you to, to, to click on to see uh, the, the, the kind of what we have sort of tried to formulate in, in a, a short one-sided manifesto uh, that we want leaders to sign. Uh, and, and that is going to be launched on the 16th of September. And hopefully we will also, uh, that will be digital, of course, in these times, but we are also looking forward to have something more of a bigger event at the Stockholm Plus 50 uh, meeting in 2022. So hopefully this will be uh, th this will be an ongoing process and something that will we will try to grow organic, so to say. So that we are sort of inviting you to look how does it fit to your agendas? How can this be something that we also could take on and and be a part of? And hopefully we will have have uh, uh, good voices for the 16 September uh, webinar that we we are are, are aiming to have. I need to ask you who who would be against this? I think it, it found I found it sort of peculiar because uh, when you say maybe someone would think that uh, this law could actually try to find some of the the criminals to go catch them and put them in jail or things like that, but as a, it's a non -re -re retroactive uh, law, it only it doesn't deal with things that happened in the past. It only ha deals with things happening in, in the future. And it, in that sense, it's sort of preventing um, harmful uh, behavior. So who would actually be against it? Or, or could you say something about sort of the strength of that, not trying, not using the law to try to find uh, sort of the criminals, but actually preventing things from happening? 
I think that one critique may be that you sort of uh, make the, the human value less if you are sort of raising the value of ecosystem and at the, at the degradation and, and you will put human rights further uh, down so uh, hierarchy but I, I don't think uh, to me it's not about that it's to keep the, the importance of, of human rights and human values but at the same time also higher the understanding of the dependency the interconnectedness that we have an ecosystem that we are uh, neglecting in our culture mm. so it's it's more about that so that could be a critique but i don't think it's a, a good critique but it could be yeah i mean it's yeah in practice this is very challenging because uh, a lot of business models will be challenged and need to be challenged mm -hmm. and uh, actually that's also uh, so i mean the thing is that we do know how to be uh, careful and respectful and have uh, human activities that really can care for the ecosystems, but those today aren't uh, profitable since we allow very damaging and destructive activities. So if you close that door to damaging activities, you will open another one. And uh, that's where we, I mean, to me, that's about uh, taking ourselves seriously as humans. Uh, to be the you know the the beautiful people that we can be, also. So you, uh, so you it, mean it will challenge. Uh, it will. So challenge what you're saying, what you're saying is that yeah. there are some business models that sort of rely on being able to uh, do harm to nature or just pollute or whatever in order to do this. And if there's a, if there's an accident or if there's big destruction. That company will be fine, but the people who make the decision will go free. But in this case, with the law, actually, that will pinpoint not companies, not countries, not organizations, but people who make the decisions. Yeah. Yeah. The, so the people it. of superior responsibility. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's very, very and, strong. Yeah. And, and, and that's also, you know, that's actually a support to people who want to be careful. Because today, if, if you say that, so if you're the CEO of a company, for example, and you're sitting um, and you're presenting a project and, uh, and you're saying, um, so this is a potentially very profitable project and uh, uh, yeah, it would be good for, for our stakeholders, but actually my, my granddaughter is now sitting and doing climate strikes every Friday and this will impact her future in a, in a severe way so actually you know we we shouldn't do this really and then the board would just say okay but you know we are not here to take care of, of your grandchild or the climate we're here to take care of, of profits for our shareholders so you you know the door is, is there and we'll get a new ceo um, but for those people responsible uh, if they could say that you know this might be profitable, but it also is potentially an international crime. I don't want to take that personal responsibility, and neither should you, who are the mm. chairman of the board. So that becomes a support for people in, in uh, high post, you know, high responsibility. So the, 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 there's a total different storytelling about how to make business. And as Henrik were sort of on a little bit in the beginning, there's another another kind of storytelling about our or you as well, Pella, our relation with nature in itself. And yes. and and the, the faith community so is very strong when it comes to storytelling. So that's something to really build on. Should we open up the door for some questions? And um, I don't know, I haven't looked at the chat if you have wrote uh, written a lot of questions there or if we if you just raise your hand maybe let's see if, if that is enough hello um then i have to see you in a gallery view as well so if you use the um, raise hand uh symbol let's i see don't if, have if there are any questions one. Well, dog, and we have uh, uh, Davis, Jeffrey Davis as well. So, and please keep the questions fairly short, 
And um, yes, of course. Mm? But dog first. Okay. I, I just want uh, to. It's not a question. I just want to emphasize the, the importance of the faith communities being involved because all, all religions just concentrate on humans at the moment, and we've mm. got to put across the view that that all life is sacred and important to God. And I think that's where we, as faith communities, can be a driving force to say that we, we cannot continue to destroy the rest of life uh, because we, we've actually got a responsibility. And from a Christian point of view, if you read the Bible, the green spectacles, you will see that uh, that's clear. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Jeffrey, for that powerful statement that you can find also on the website of, of ours. Dog, please. Yes, um, this is about voices. Uh, how do you give voice to a speechless, speechless partner? Uh, because if you go to court, uh, nature has to be the one who is the owner of the case or whatever you call it in English. I don't know that. Maltsäger, it's called in Swedish. Um, how do you secure that? Because the thing is, we are always talking about what we humans are doing. Uh, we are not talking about nature. We are talking about what we as faith communities are thinking or doing or hoping for or wishing for or struggling for and things like that. Uh, but the suffering part, how do you give voice to the suffering part? Because that is the thing that this must be all about. Um, there must Pella. be another partner. Yeah, I think Pella has something on that. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so thank you, Doug. So this is a very complex question that you're raising, and I think you know. So I'm very active in the rights of nature movement globally, and, uh, and it's kind of boiling there with different examples of how that's technically done and there are very many interesting examples so what we have been proposing is for example to have an ombudsman uh, to have that as a responsibility what would nature need but in this case it's quite simple it's not simple it's actually very complex but it's yes. still there is a frame which is yeah. that uh, there is a crime ecocide yeah. is a crime and yeah. it's a crime that can be defined and that definition was as I said, presented today. And uh, it's, that's not an easy task for judges to work with that crime, but it's still a definition uh, that mm. is workable. In that sense, it's still quite anthropocentric. It's yes. a crime and we define yes. what it is. Yes, it's not exactly. As... No, exactly. That's my point. Uh, who who is uh, who is the accusing part, and how how does that part raise the voice apart from collapsing? Uh, we would have which... to have some 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 of the lawyers here to answer that question, but we unfortunately <laughs> we don't have it. <laughs> I, I we need to give uh, the word to uh, ask, I'm sorry for my pronunciation. Gopal Patel. Yeah. Oh. Next. That's correct. Hi, Martin. Hello, Pella. Good to see you again after a few Hey, months. good to see you too. Be with everyone, Henrik, and, and other colleagues and friends. Um, I'm just in the. I'm. I'm trying to process this excellent work that you've done and, and thinking through how we can best mainstream it and integrate it into the work that we're, we're all doing in the different forums that, that have been mentioned. Um, I just have a like some kind of like practical questions in terms of um, between now and September, will there be opportunities to understand what the structure is of this little faith group that that has been convened that Henrik seems to be leading and will we get a sense of what the overall strategy is so that we can better understand how to plug in as as, as a faith community you know at these specific moments the CBD the, the triple C cop and, and things like that so more just a question on like structure and process at this point thank you Thank you so much, uh, Gopal. Exactly structure and process is actually what I personally need a lot of help with. So uh, a, a suggestion I would have is for those of you who would like to be involved in structure and process and things like that uh, to, to get in touch and uh, we can set up a meeting because uh, we are uh, working 
and building the boat as we go, sort of. So our first step now is September 16th. And as Henrik mentioned, we're also loosely planning something towards the Stockholm Plus 50 conference. But other than that, it's still kind of hazy. So it's a great opportunity to, to become participatory. Right. Thank you. Um, Manoj uh, Kurian. Yeah, thank you very much. I mean, really uh, fantastic work. And then I, I think it's just following up on what, what Gopal was saying. I, you know, we it is very critical that we bring in uh, the voices of the Eastern religions, you know, because they have integrally, you know, they, they are not, I mean, so in the sense we miss a lot of, we are very anthropocentric in the, in the Abrahamic faiths. So we will get a lot of um, a lot of um, kind of you know support and champions you know among the Eastern, I mean, including Shintoism, Hinduism, Sikhism, Jainism, all these faiths. So what my point is that we need to reach out to the regions and the countries because ultimately, if you want this uh, law to be accepted, it has to be accepted globally, and we have natural partners in these regions. And we have to seek out through the networks that you know that, that are here, and um, I, I think I think it's great because, but, but I think you know it, it, we have to also learn from countries which have brought in laws like you know like New Zealand, like India, you know giving more life to rivers and things like so. So that that's okay. Thank you, but thank you very much for this. Thank you, and um, I have a list here: Martin Kopp, and then Kusimita Peterson, and then Liu Bota. You're number three then. So Martin Kopp first. Thank you, everyone. Bonjour. Happy to see known faces as well. I'll be short. Um, I, I thank you for this uh, first meeting and, and this idea. And it really seems like a step in the good direction. And, and spontaneously, indeed, who could oppose? And at the same time, if I think, for example, at the Christian, from a Christian point of view, um, and the idea of ecocide and moving towards criminalizing or defining it as a crime and this question of the values of ecosystems, beings, human beings, etc. We're touching upon, at times, difficult and complex, uh, also theological and spiritual questions. And so I wanted to ask, uh, out of curiosity, if WCC had developed and other maybe religious partners or organizations in the room had developed a theological, spiritual argument or, or um, you know, like what are the key points that would come in support for that? because that is the question we would get in our networks beyond just explaining what is ecocide and so on. We will bring it back to our, back, our, our own foundations. And so that would be in any case, an important element in any strategy of mobilizing people of faith and spirit. Thanks. Can you just give a court, short comment on that? Thank you, Martin, for bringing it up. I think it's also, we, we are building it while we're doing the boat more or less, but I, I also would be happy if, if there are some of you who would like to volunteer in, in a sort of uh, religious discussion on, on, on what we see from our different tradition also that can be problematic because I think that it's good for our for, for our communication that we are aware of, of problem, problems that we will have in different uh, traditions. So thank you for bringing it up. It, thank yeah, you. And can uh, I no? add to that? So I saw also the question from Rachel about the Global Alliance for the Rights of Nature who are focusing mainly on rights of nature. And, and this is kind of a little piece in the puzzle of rights of nature. And it's kind of also, in my view, it's a Trojan horse for rights of nature because ecocide law um, can be viewed as totally anthropocentric, and that's a strength. Mm -hmm. So we as humans, we, I mean, we can even talk about human rights if we don't have clean water, if we don't have clean air, if we don't have ecosystems that give us all we need. Um, so, I mean... If you need to, you can actually argue for ecocide law from an anthropocentric perspective. On the other hand, if nature, if we would acknowledge that nature has a right to exist, as uh, uh, Bishop Davis said before, um, then if nature has the right to life, then there has to be a crime that protects that right to life. So then ecocide needs to be a crime as well. 
And that, is, that makes it a bridge between those uh, paradigms, actually. So a very powerful bridge. Thank you. Thank you very much. Kusumita Peterson. Um, thank you. Um, let me lower my hand. <laughs> oh, that's okay. That's okay. Um, uh, first, I want to underscore what um, Manoj Kurian has said about bringing in um, Asian religions and also uh, indigenous traditions have already been mentioned. And, and I would like to, um, you know, caution against speaking of indigenous um, peoples as if they don't have religions, because we sometimes hear that. Um, you know, that uh, the spiritual traditions of indigenous peoples don't count as religions. And I've had indigenous leaders object strenuously to me about that language problem. Um, but um, it was also just mentioned by Martin Kopp that um, uh, we need resources for the, um, what the different uh, uh, traditions say um, on um, eco-theology, if you will, or environmental ethics. And research on that has been going forward since the 1980s. And there's a, a tremendous body of theological and ethical research on um, not just on Abrahamic or Western traditions, but on, um, I'd say, just about all of the um, faith traditions. And um, the Parliament of the World's Religions um, and the UN Environment Program with Iyad Abu Mowgli. Um, who kindly, kindly gave us a grant, uh, has published a book last October during the Faith for Earth conference called um, uh, Faith for Earth, a, a Call for Action. And there are hard copies of the book, but it's also a free PDF that you can download from UNEP and you can also download from the Parliament website. And I will put the links in the chat because you know, people ask you, well, what's the position? you know, in this tradition or that tradition, this book presents it um, in, in a, I mean, uh, in a, we, using primary sources. It's not opinion or anybody or people's views, um, but you. primary sources from the religions. So that, and, and also half of the book is a basic presentation of um, the issues and the environmental crisis, including climate change, but not limited to climate change at all. Um, Thank you. So this is a resource, and I'll put the links. Uh, put put the link there. We need we need to wrap up a little bit, just uh, and I need to bring in Liu Bota as well uh, before we do the wrap up. Thank you, Martin. I just want to go back to the question raised by Dag and also alluded to by Pella, the issue of representation in court. For those who are not familiar with it, when normally a prosecutor prosecutes a crime in in court, he's representing the people of the country, and the um, Prosecutor will, depends on where you are, but will say we the people uh, represent the people of the country in prosecuting a crime. Now, this particular ecocide law is going to change that. It's going to be the prosecutor will be representing the earth, mother earth. And this is the difference between the normal crime. It's be, this, this law is going to de-link the concern about the human issues to the concern about mother earth and the crime that's been committed against the earth. So, Doug, I don't know if that answers your question. The, the prosecutor will be representing the earth against whoever's committing the crime. Does that help you? <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? Okay. Thank you very much. Everyone, we need, we need to get, we need to wrap up. We're two or three minutes over time. I'm sorry for, we, we can't have, um, help all the, taking care of all the questions that you have, but we need um, to have some final words from Henrik and then Pella Thiel about, the, you've mentioned something about the future, but how do you want to sort of conclude this, these 45 minutes? And, and how do we move on forward after this? Or something else that you think we need to, we need to say that haven't been said so far? Yeah. Please help us build this boat, will you? And uh, you'll get a follow-up email with uh, some thoughts from us. And uh, just uh, don't hesitate to get in touch because uh, we, we really want to, to, um, to have you participate in, in this action and yeah. have your thoughts. 
Yeah, just to wrap, I, I'm, a, I'm a bit high on this. I think it's, it, it's so, this, this discussion has really been moving me forward, I think. And I'm, I'm so happy to see that you are here and you are pushing it forward, not just accepting this is a good. And I really hope that we can be in touch when we develop this concept over, over the coming months and in the coming year. Uh, and I'm I'm sure this this is gonna this is gonna fly. I'm I'm happy to say that I think that this is this gonna fly. But very much due to that you are are so supportive, and I know you are in so many networks. So, yep, it's a blessing more or less. And I see in the chat that so much good thing coming there. So, yeah, just take this another step forward, and we keep in touch. It's been a, a great 45, 50 minutes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Henrik. Thank you, Pella. And thank you, everyone participating in this uh, webinar. And stay in, in touch. Thank you, Martin, for hosting us. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Bara du chatten Martin.